Hello, my friends. I created this easy to follow tutorial for those of you who are new and just starting out with Procreate Dreams 2. You'll have fun animating using your stylus to direct the action instead of painstakingly drawing frames. We'll also learn how to add life to our projects using sound. In part one, you'll be drawing all the pieces you need for your animation using Procreate. In part two, you'll learn how to animate using the updated Procreate Dreams app. Let me show you how the two Procreate apps were meant to be used together. I'll teach you how to make realistic glass using feathering and how to make any object or shape glow and sparkle. All you need for this project is this background I've created for you. You can grab it for free using the link below, or better yet, you can scan this QR code to download it directly to your iPad. In your browser, you're gonna hold down on it and choose Save to Photos. All right, so now that you've got your template ready, let's open up Procreate and jump right in. And we're gonna use Photo here in the corner to load that background that I gave you. This is gonna ensure the size is correct. From here, we're gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna tap on the plus sign to make a new layer. And I like to just exit my artwork to lock that layer so it doesn't uh, vanish on me. <laughs> and then for the brushes, I'm gonna make sure I'm in the classic library and I'm going to calligraphy and using my monoline. Now I have a little bit of stabilization on my brush. So if I tap on the brush and go to stabilization, this is what my settings look like. So the first slider goes all the way up and then the rest are kind of halfway. They don't need to be exactly 50%, just anywhere in the middle is fine. And for the brush size, I'm using 10%. So we're gonna draw our lantern and we're gonna use symmetry to kind of help us out here. So you can find symmetry in the wrench under canvas and it's one of the drawing guides. So I'm gonna turn that on and then edit it. And here, symmetry, you'll see the line going up and down your screen. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And then you need to pick a color for your lantern. This can be whatever bright color that you want. I'm gonna be using cyan blue today. And I would say just don't pick too much of a pastel color. So I'm picking from this quadrant of my color wheel. Okay, so to draw the lantern, I'm gonna try and position it here in the middle. And I'm gonna start with a straight line. So I'm gonna draw a line and then hold my pen down. And then if you release your pen, there's an edit button here that's gonna let you make final adjustments. So I'm gonna make sure that it's more narrow here at the bottom than the top. You can really control kind of the shape that you're creating for this object. And then for the top, I'm gonna to draw another straight line, but this time I'm gonna put my finger down at the same time. This is gonna make sure that that line is nice and parallel um, and it'll just kind of connect a little bit better. Great, and then we can color that shape in. So for the glass, it's really easy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on the layer and choose select. You might see some lines on your screen. And then we're gonna to go to feather and I'm gonna set my feather to 15%. Now we're gonna to go to the wrench and choose add and then you can pick cut and it'll look like this. If it didn't work, just go back to the steps and redo it and it'll probably work on the second try. So I wanna make this glass a little bit brighter. So all I have to do is duplicate the layer and it's gonna kind of double it up and then I can squish these layers back together. Now, generally speaking, you don't wanna be squishing layers unless I kind of tell you to do that because we're planning this for the animation and we do really need our layers separate for certain things we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start another new layer and I need to tap on this layer and turn on drawing assist. If I don't do this, I actually won't get the symmetry for this new layer that I've created. And then I'm gonna pick out a black color. So now I'm gonna draw a straight line going into the middle and I wanna leave a little bit of an overhang like this. And then I'm gonna draw my like rounded top here. Now when you're using symmetry, it can be really difficult to get that middle part to work out. So often I'll just erase it if it's kind of buckling. And then when I'm super zoomed in, it's much easier for me to get the line to kind of match up nicely. Great, so I'm gonna do this on the top and then kind of like a smaller version on the bottom. So another thing I need to warn you about is the arrow tool. Because we're using symmetry, you don't wanna kind of move things around. I'll show you later how you can do that. So if your lantern isn't in the quite the perfect spot, we're gonna adjust it later, so just be patient. Okay, so now I'm gonna start another new layer and turn on the drawing assist. And this is where I'm gonna draw another little like hat on top of the hat. And you just have to remember to seal off the shape right here because this is kind of an empty open spot so that I can just kind of color it in. And then the last thing I'm gonna add to my lantern is a ring. And this time I'm not gonna turn on symmetry because we're drawing a circle 
and symmetry and circles don't really like each other. So I'm gonna set my brush size to 60%. So I'm gonna draw my circle and hold my pen down to get a nice shape like this. And then if you put your finger down at the same time, it'll force it to be a perfect circle. Okay, so maybe your lantern is too big or not in the right spot. Let me show you how we actually can move that around safely. So first I'm gonna select all these layers because you don't need to squish layers just to move them. So I'm swiping right and I'm lighting up all of these layers in blue. Next, I'm gonna to go to the arrow and I'm gonna turn on snapping here. So snapping is this button. And what this allows me to do, so let's say I make my lantern a little bit smaller and I move it around. Now I'm gonna make sure it lines up with the center line. See how it lights up orange? It's really important that we do that. Otherwise things will be kind of thrown off. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here cause I'm gonna draw a really nice chain. And so I want lots of room for that. So I'm gonna to go to the top layer and then start a new layer. And for this one, I actually do want the drawing assist turned on. And then my brush size is around 7%. So I'm gonna zoom in here. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of room from the bottom and then I'm gonna just draw a straight line like this. And then a little dash at the top and right here. And then I just like to connect this with a rounded line. Now don't worry, we're not gonna draw all the links. We're just gonna draw one and then make a bunch of copies. So it's worth putting in the time to get this one to look really nice. So I've got my first link finished and now I'm gonna duplicate the layer and use my arrow to create lots of them. Now there's gonna be like a piece that goes through the middle like this. This is the sideways link. So make sure there's a kind of a nice amount of spacing between all of them. It should be nice and even. And with the snapping turned on, it makes it so much easier to kind of line these links up. Okay, great. So now that we're done with our chain, we're actually gonna squish this all on one layer. So this is the bottom of my chain here, right above the circle. So all of these layers here, I'm gonna squish them like this. And then I'm gonna start a new layer. This one doesn't have drawing assist turned on. And then I'm gonna do the vertical chain. So that's just gonna be these little lines like this, very nice, very neat. So that's what my lantern looks like so far. And now we're gonna get into some highlighting. So I'm gonna find layer three here and I'm going to alpha lock this layer. So I'm gonna tap on it and turn on alpha lock. And you're gonna pick whatever color you want your fireflies to be. So mine are gonna be like this like lime green color, very vibrant. And then for my brushes, I'm actually gonna scroll down and I'm gonna look up the word mint and as in peppermint. And I'm gonna find the mint bush brush like this. It's in the new brushes. It's a really, really nice brush. And I'm gonna set my brush size Let's start with 7% for size and 50% for opacity. And right here in the middle, I'm gonna add my glow. So you wanna press really, really lightly, but if you don't have a pressure sensitive stylus like I do, you can lower your opacity even more to kind of get control of it. The bottom, maybe I'll make my brush size like 3% and add the glow here. Okay, so that looks really wonderful. And then I'm just gonna do this little hat. So I'm gonna turn on alpha lock, probably keep the same size and highlight the hat. Now the reason we're using this kind of like gritty brush is because the highlight will reveal the texture of the metal, which is kind of has these little pop marks. Okay, so now we're ready for that circle. So again, I'm gonna alpha lock and I'll make my brush even smaller, maybe 2%. So the highlight goes on the outside of the ring and then a little bit on the inside. So I'm gonna highlight the chain and I'm going to turn on alpha lock but also turn off the drawing assist because highlights typically go on one side. And then I'm gonna pick a really small brush size. So I want essentially 0.5. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna drag my pen out here and then keep lowering it. And you can actually get smaller than 1%. So for me, it's gonna be something like this and then I can kind of highlight the link here. So you wanna do less and less highlight as you move up the links. Okay, great, so I think that looks really awesome. And then let's add a glow to the lantern. And this part is gonna be animated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this um, layer two here and I'm gonna duplicate it one more time. And then I'm gonna use this bottom copy. 
and I'm gonna go to my magic wand and pick out Gaussian blur, and then I'm swiping my pen to the right. And if you look up here, there's a number. I'm gonna set this number to 25%. And then just like before, I kind of want to double this. So I'm going to duplicate it once, maybe three times. You can decide what you think looks best for your glow. And then I'm going to squish these layers down. Now I want to make it very clear what this layer is. So I'm going to tap on it and rename it glow. Okay, great. So I think that finishes up our lantern and now we're going to package it up. Just like we selected multiple layers before, I'm going to swipe right like this. So you want everything except for layer one, and then I'm gonna group this together and close it. And this group, I'm also gonna label it. So I'm gonna rename it Lantern. Okay, great, so let's start a firefly. So I'm gonna start a new layer, and then I'm gonna go back to my brushes and find my classic library. And I'm gonna go to calligraphy and find the monoline. My brush is still 10%, and right in the middle of the lantern, I'm gonna draw a circle hold my pen down and then put my finger down at the same time. I want this to be a perfect circle. And then I'm just gonna color that in. So these fireflies are actually gonna be flying around our lantern, but for now I'm putting it in the middle because when I make it glow, I just wanna be careful it doesn't get cut off on the edges. So just like we did for our lantern, I'm going to duplicate this circle and use the bottom copy. And then I can go to the magic wand and choose Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna swipe my pen to the right. And I'm gonna pick 25% for how far it glows. And then I'm just gonna make one, maybe three copies. You can kind of build it and see what you think. Um, I'm actually gonna just do the two. I think that looks nice. And then I'm gonna go back to the original circle and I'm gonna Gaussian blur this one just a tiny little bit. So if I look at the number there, I'm blending it maybe 2%. And then the last thing that I really like to add to my glowing effects is if you go to luminance, you're gonna find the light pen there, which might be one of my favorite brushes. And I'm gonna set the size to 10%. So when things are glowing, they often will light up the dust particles in the air. And we can add those. This is sometimes referred to as atmospherics. So now we're gonna to go to our layers and we can actually squish this firefly all on one layer. That would be totally okay. So we need another new layer, and this is where we're gonna do some grasses here at the bottom. They're gonna be swaying in the wind as part of our animation. And the brush that I really like for this one is under inking, and it's called the Studio Pen. And I also have some stabilization settings. I use the, always use the same settings, so you can pause the video here if you wanna copy those. And for the color, I'm gonna grab the original color from the bottom, and in my color wheel, I'm gonna drop the circle down and go to the left because I want it to be kind of, look like it's a little bit further away. And then I'm gonna set my brush size to 15%, but please change the size if you need. Kind of just depends on how hard you press and things like that. So for the grasses, I'm gonna start from the bottom and as I'm lifting my brush up, I am releasing the pressure to create these nice pointy ends. Now, if you don't have a pressure sensitive stylus like I do, you could make your brush really small and draw shapes that look like this and color them in. Obviously that would take a little bit longer, but it's still doable. So you can draw all the grasses if you want yourself, but I like to do like a little cluster and then I'll just kind of move it around. Sometimes I'll flip it to kind of make it look a little different, but um, this can kind of speed your process up. And then you can just kind of squish all of those on one layer. Okay, so next we're gonna draw like willows. So I'm gonna set my brush size down to maybe 8%. And I'm gonna start with like a thin line here. So I'm pressing really lightly. And then at the top, they have this kind of shape here. So the grasses can be cut off on the ends, but all the bigger plants that we're gonna be drawing, we wanna be careful that we don't like put them on the edge here. Um, because once we're animating them, they will kind of feel like they're separating from the edge. So we wanna avoid that. And we're not really interested in details here. These shapes are actually silhouettes, so we wouldn't be able to see like their color or like uh, details like veins. Um, it's just the outside shape that we're creating here. So the last type of plant that I'm gonna do is a fern. And I think I'm gonna put it on a new layer because it's quite difficult to draw. So I think I'm gonna just draw a real, a, one really good one and then um, I'll just make copies for it. So I drew the main line here and then I'll make my brush a little bit bigger again, maybe 
And then at the top here, there's like the one central leaf. And then on either side, we have these leaves that kind of match up. So if there's one on one side, there'll be another one on the opposite side. Okay, great, so that fern looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna duplicate for another one. And I'm definitely gonna flip it so it looks a little bit different. And again, remember not to cut anything off. Okay, so that's what my grasses look like when they're done. And when I go to my layers, they're all on this layer here. So let's just review what our layers should look like. So here I have my grasses on their own layer. Then I have the firefly on its own layer. Then I have the lantern in this group, so you can use this little arrow to open and close it. Finally, I have the background here, separated from everything else. And that's it, my friends. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you had fun and picked up a few new Procreate Dreams tricks along the way. If you'd like to share your finished artwork with me, you can find my social media link below. I post new tutorials every week, so if you enjoyed this one, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next great project I've got cooking. Adios.